so. Welcome everybody to another episode of The Soap. Tonight it's just me and Mike. We're going to have a chat about something that's near and dear to our hearts, our heads, our fleshy areas and our exposed unarmoured bits. We're going to have a chat about... Hello. Hello. Hello, Mike. We're going to have a chat about the Battle of the Nations and hitting people with swords and sticks and other various weaponry. So, in case you don't know, over the last week or so, the Battle of the Nations has been playing out over in Italy. The uh, Battle of the Nations is the historical... What is it called, Mike? The HM... Historical Medieval Battles. Historical Medieval Battles Association's Grand Tournament of the Year, where teams of dudes and ladies, hello Sky, do come from all around the world to beat the absolute living bejesus out of each other with swords, sticks, axes. So, hang on, hang on. You, you know Sky and I know Rhiannon? Yes, and I know, hey. I know, I know a few guys over there in Team Australia at the moment. So we will, yeah, we will yeah. get to that. Me and Mike have sort of both uh, been around this kind of thing in, in maybe a little bit shared different, interests. Shared interests. So that's why I was saying it's close to our heads, our hearts, our soft, fleshy areas, and strike points. <laughs> but so. If you've ever seen, you know, Game of Thrones or, or anything where they've got dudes in armour just wailing the absolute shit out of each other, or you've ever seen jousting or medieval reenactment at a fair or, uh, or, you know, a show or something like that, these guys take that to an absolute another level. These guys are crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. They're fully armoured with full weapons. Of course, the weapons aren't sharp. That's about the only safety concern that they have is the weapons aren't sharp. But they do just wail on each other until they fall down. And it is an amazing sport. It is really, really full on. I've had the pleasure of meeting a few of the guys. Uh, Mike's had the pleasure of meeting a few of the guys. And thought we would talk a little bit about how we came to know about Battle of the Nations and what we did previously, and also a little bit more about the actual Battle of the Nations itself. So, let's get stuck in. Mike, how do you know the guys from Team Australia? Now, a couple of blokes, uh, Steve and Tim. Hey, fellas. I used to work with Steve back in the days when I used to work for Games Workshop, and then through him I met Tim. As time went on, you move on from you know working with each other. Kept in touch with Steve, and Steve, for, for some, never was interested that much in it. But then somehow he, boom, straight in, jumped into it and enjoyed it and whatever. And I come from the LARPing side, so it's like, you know, hey, these guys are extreme. <laughs> and it was like coming from a LARP side, he kept trying. Like I, I met him at a medieval fair one time, and they're like, yeah, man, yeah, cool. Like, you know, we do this and that. Come and have a look. And I was like, all right, sweet. And then I jumped on their Facebook page, and so this is Tim Havoc from Sydney. Guys were like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. And I know a few fellows from Melbourne and the Team Kraken. It was like, you know, hey, just give it a try, come along. So I did, and it was very intense. So <laughs> <laughs> that That is, yeah. Very, very intense. That is, that is an understatement. So these guys whack each other, like thump, thump each other. Yeah. Well, it's, it's pretty much... It's beat the other person till they're unconscious. More or less, yeah. Yeah, so they don't do it for show. Uh, a lot of their matches are quite short and quite brutal. There's no sort of, you know, fancy footwork and sword play and deflecting shield, de deflecting swords and disarming people and all of that fancy Hollywood stuff. These guys just will bash your face in until <laughs> you fall over. Well, when we were saying before, um, you know, LARPers are just, they're trying to, to touch you. Reenactors are trying to knock you down and make it look good. And HMB is pretty much just to get you to the ground as quick as they could. In any way possible. In any way possible. In any way possible. So, like yeah. we were doing, we were doing training where it was get the guy in your, in your, in the ring and grab him grapple him and then kind of spin him around so that your buddy can come up behind him and knee him in the back and then push him over. Yeah. And you're like, fuck. And then he was like, uh, another one's like, okay, guys. Um, AJ was in the corner. He's like, okay, I want you to run at me and I want you to leap and jump with your knee into my chest. Just boom. Shot that. And we're just watching these guys in full armor. And you're like, he's like, all right, I'm ready. Are you ready? We're like, yeah, okay. And then he was running and they run and they jump and they leap and they knee you in the chest and the age you just, ah. <laughs> it is intense. It is very intense. My, one of my favorite moves is the shield in the throat. That's, that's always a good oh. one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But no, oh. I mean, these guys are really safe, and, and we make it sound like it's just a bunch of dudes wailing on each other, which it, it is, but it's not in the same token. There's a lot of training involved, massive amounts of physical strength and fitness. There is a marshal watching as well. There is, There are marshals, and there's a lot of technique involved. It's just that medieval fighting was a dirty, dirty, dirty game, and anything went, especially if your guy was wearing, you know, 40 kilos of steel around all these sl- soft uh, pudgy parts and you needed to stick a blade in one of the softer bits to make him fall over. So it really is down and dirty, but also there is a lot of technique that goes into it, especially in the bigger fights. So there are lots of different types of fighting over in the Battle of the Nations. So you've got your one-on-ones, you've got 5v5, 10v10, and I think even the Grand Malay, which is 20v20. Breaking news, we actually came away with a bronze, Team Australia, yep. in the 5v5. The third. Third. So we yeah, are moving up good. in the world. I mean, the Battle of the Nations has been around for quite a while, especially in Europe and the European nations. It, it, it hadn't really stretched out to the rest of the world until probably about 10 years ago. It's a massive resurgence in getting into fighting each other medieval style and, and what we'd call uh, the his- historical medieval battles or Western martial arts or HEMA, any of those. They're all different groups basically with the same sort of idea. Mike, you came at it from a, well, what would we say, a LARPing side of things, I guess. So you're doing more of the role playing yeah. Uh, yeah. stuff with the soft swords and the fantasy element. I came to these guys from a reenactment side of things. So I did more of the historical historical accuracy, learning how to fight correctly from ancient manuscripts and and basing our armor and what we wore and what we did on tapestries and and books and history of the time where we did fight but we never were sort of shooting to kill. We had, you know, things that you could do, couldn't do. We had soft blades, not soft blades, blunt blades. And certain types of weapons were outlawed, like um, falchion, tipped weapons, big axes, uh, maces, and stuff like that. However, most of that goes over in the Battle of the Nations. I think the only thing you can't really have is a big-ass hammer. If I am correct, and if any of the guys... Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah it should if be If any right. of the guys are going to be listening to this, please correct me if I'm wrong on the socials, but I'm pretty sure you can't just hammer someone to death. As <laughs> cool as that might be. <laughs> hammer of death. You just come in like Thor and just, you know, take over and, yeah. and hammer people down. But why don't uh, we sort of move away from the amazing ballsness that is the Battle of the Nations? We will come back to that. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this uh, LARP? Mike, you have mentioned it a few times. I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> wouldn't be really over what LARP is. Do you want to, you know, maybe give us a bit more of a rundown of what you do and what you were doing? So LARP, as it is called, is live action role play. Now, there are variations where it would be like a live action role battle, which would just be more like fighting. Uh, Role playing is pretty much just being acting, but not getting paid for it. Acting as a character who you've made up. So imagine playing a game of D&D, computer game and you can pretty much just you can put on an accent you can put on some fancy clothes and you can you can overact a character uh, and there's a fun side of it where you, you know I, when I do role play I'm usually I like to pretend I'm drunk <laughs> and I'll walk <laughs> with a big hammer and will I'll whack people you know saying how you know a bit like Thor strike this you know the I have a character called the Baron and I'm like you strike the Baron not a match at all. Yeah, so it's a bit of fun. So you can do other characters and you can have a whole list of things and you can do whatever you want. There are rules for games and stuff like that. You might, like, there's no head hitting. Uh, hands and feet don't count. Uh, the groinal areas and the don't count. And you'll have hit points. So uh, the idea of armor. So you can you could wear the heaviest armor, the strongest armor. It doesn't matter because uh, you get hit. It gives you points, and so you may have from base points might be three, and then they go up from there. So I usually consider around 15 to 16 points, and it's just if you get tapped, you know, if they whack you, you 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 know you're down for the count. So you you take your point down, right? You count your hits. Oh, I'm going down to three points now. I probably. And you might have healers, and there's a couple of classes and here and there, and different weapons. You can have a bit of magic. So I run with this group called Sydney Sydney LARP. 
there are a couple of groups South Sydney, I think Battle Cry, there's this Cadia one, there's Clans of Elgar, there's but the majority is it in Melbourne. A uh, big following, big community called Swordcraft. And I pretty much base my stuff off their old stuff. They do a lot of battle games on a Friday night. And they can range from 300 people to 500 people. And then when we have, say, uh, a full week of it, so twice a year, called Quest, can range from 600 to 1,000 people fighting, you know, and role-playing and doing a heck of a lot of stuff. Uh, this year it was at Cairo Castle, and while the castle was fantastic, we had to fight on this old horse paddock, and it wasn't the greatest, <laughs> but it was a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, I pretty much just ran with a different weapon every day, uh, just to try out. You know, different weapons and stuff. Uh, I was with this... So with the Melbourne crew, you've got war bands, and they're different war bands. I was with the North, Blades of the North, which is a Viking era kind of thing. We're all dressed in Vikings. Go in there, and you can scream, and you're like, you know, for Odin and uh, for Thor. And then you'd have people on the other side that might be screaming for, um, you know, some other god. A lot of it is kind of based in, say, the tabletop, like Warhammer stuff where they'll be like, blood for the blood god. You know, people will yell whatever they want to yell. Some get some get right into it, which is uh, what we, people would call phonetic. And then you've got people who just, like, throw on an accent and go, yeah, cool, <laughs> whatever, I'm just here to get drunk. Like, that's, for me, that's my two weeks of getting drunk, like, you know, hammered all day, every day. <laughs> this is what I, uh, you know, this is what I live for. <laughs> but, I, well, actually, this quest was a little bit uh, less drinky because it was... um. Only you couldn't bring drinks with you. Usually I'll bring a couple of slabs and I'll just polish them off. But it was uh, drinking at the tavern and it was very expensive. So it was like, oh, cannot afford this. Could you not have raided someone's camp and stole all of their gold pieces? No, 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 no. That's right. called theft, oh, okay? okay. okay. I'm, I'm playing a rogue. It's okay, right? No. Um, <laughs> no, see? That's so, excuses. So it's basically like D&D or, or role play without the dice. Yeah. And it's live. Yeah, I um, the group and a couple of groups in Bathurst do the D and D, and I came to them. I said, "Hi, hi guys, hi. You know what you do? You you do this D and D." And they're like, "Yeah, we love it. It's great." I'm like, well, I do it, but in real life. And they're like, "Oh, okay." And then they kept eating their chips and rolling their dice. <laughs> so it was like, well, I'm preaching to the wrong crowd, apparently. Yep. So, but the, a lot of them come from a D and D aspect. So a lot of them go, oh, cool, you know, like, we can actually do this. Like, I can throw, you know, fire at people or, you know, swing a sword and a shield and spear. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of, yeah, you take it as you, you put in what you put out. It's an expensive hobby. You've got, to, you've got to follow through with it. So you can't just, you can you can hop out here and there. But once you get your chain mail, you're stuck with chain mail, you know? <laughs> I do, actually. Yeah, um. exactly. <laughs> I, I really do. Okay, cool. So, I mean, how many how many people are sort of down in Sydney in the the Sydney? So the groups are varied. So it ranges from a small group could be like ten to fifteen, or it could be like a hundred. So it's it hasn't hasn't really um, hasn't really boosted here in Sydney. It's still in a small kind of group, you know, it's still a small community, and I mean, it's got potential to grow. And we're hoping to, you know, eventually all work together and maybe form a super lap uh, and maybe do a Sydney thing, like a full, you know, New South Wales. But that's in the future. And each group is different. So some groups will do more role play. Uh, we would like to say my little group will do a more battle focus. And a couple of other groups will just do battles and they'll just do, you know, they'll do a lot more role play. So it's, you know, it's a bit of... Um, there's a little bit of division, and it's, I like to say it's a little bit of everything for everyone. So you come into it, you can go, hey, I want to do more fighting. Well, there's this group. Oh, I want to do more role play. Well, there's this group. So it's it's a bit of an avenue for everyone. Okay, okay. So does it sort of lead into, you know, your cosplaying stuff and maybe a bit more futuristic as well? Or is we, that... Yeah. Is it still more fantasy-based? It's still fantasy-based. Most of it is fantasy-based. I've actually was talking to my guys earlier in the week and they were actually discussing was uh we could do maybe like a steampunky sci-fi thing and i was like yeah okay 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 and we could do that on a separate day and we could look at running one of those so but the main fo- uh, focus is fantasy and, and medieval era so there'll be rules say like there are things called band guns which is pretty much like a flintlock pistol or a flintlock rifle but it's got like a surgical mm-hmm. tubing which is a band 
So think of a band gun, okay. like a, you know, rubber, rubber band gun, but actually, you know, a bit stronger. Yep. And you can, you know, you pull those out and bang, off you, you know, you shoot someone and they take a hit. Very much like bows and arrows, we use uh, foam-tipped arrows. So they're pretty much, you know, a shaft of an arrow with uh, reinforced foam and stuff. So you can shoot people and it doesn't kill them, you know. Yeah, I have done a little bit of that medieval yeah, paintball. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, running man sort of stuff. Actually, with a with an offshoot of an SCA group, which you're probably familiar with. I can't remember who they were, but they were in the mountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Roni, um, Barony of Roni. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunter yeah, the Panther. Something like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Good group, so that is awesome yeah. fun. If you haven't hunted a man down with a bow and arrow, I, I absolutely <laughs> recommend. He's it. dressed as a panther. Oh, so, he yeah. wasn't dressed as a panther. We just we just stuck a helmet ah, and some chainmail. Okay. Well, on usually, him. yeah. Oh, usually we yeah they they stick him in onesie um, <laughs> and let the kids <laughs> let the kids go wild with a bow and arrow. Oh, lovely! And, I like yeah. that. No, I haven't done that. Maybe we should organise that. I've still got all my gear. <laughs> um, actually, speaking of weapons, you did mention before you know that you you're whacking people with swords and 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 things like that. What what is the the style of weaponry you guys use? Is it more of a, a foam kind of weaponry? It is. Uh, let's how the correct term I think is a latex foam injected weapon. If that's the right word, Ooh, that sounds sounds a bit like a dildo. Yeah, it, it does sound a bit naughty. Yeah. <laughs> So what it is, it's a carbon rod, which could be for whatever length, and then in a mould, you'd have your template of your sword or your spear mm-hmm. or your axe or whatever, and then it's it's pretty much done like you would make a plastic uh, moulding. It's injected and you paint it, they paint it, like, you know, they inject their paints into it. And So like I tried painting them by myself with regular paint, and it doesn't work because it's too flexible. So what they use, they use like a latex paint, and you know you paint it silver green purple whatever you want there so these weapons while some are good some could be ranging from the 70 dollar mark others the higher quality you're looking around like 200 300 dollars uh, and above there are certain types of groups not particularly here in australia mostly in america which is called a boffer weapon now the boffer weapon can be a homemade pvc pipe with pool noodle wrapped in duct tape Yep. Or you could tap, wrap it up in cloth to give it that kind of nice, smooth earth look. And I've seen videos in America, and they kind of they have it's it's like a paddle pop, really, like a big <laughs> ass long foam paddle pop, and they just belt the shit out of each other because it's all it's all foam. And they'll have big foam shields and stuff, and it's a little bit like uh, oh, there actually might be a group in Sydney. I think um, I think I did try and find one, but I. Couldn't get in touch with them. I'll try again. And um, and they, I think, do boffer only. They don't like doing... So with the latex stuff, it looks nice. You know, you can have a, yeah. a fantasy era looking thing. You could look for, you know, I've got... Um, oh, heck, well, you know, I've got a couple of things from, say, like Lord of the Rings, like a, the Warcraft Doom Hammer. So there's, yeah, you can... You have a bit more variety instead of whatever boffer. They have a bit basic shapes, but... With the cosplayers, they can come into it because they can use, you know, if they want to use the homemade stuff and whatever, they can do it from there. You've got your armor. Now, most of the time, that's usually like a, what is it, like a plastic armor or foam armor. So it doesn't give you that many points, but it does look sweet as. (laughs) Yes, it does. um, And yours is, yours is like leathery, isn't it? You've got a a Uh, mad leather sort of uh, suit I see. So yeah, if you've, um, yeah, I, you're stalking me on Instagram, are you? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, purely research purpose. Yeah, purely, purely research. And I've got leather, which is just uh, like a very thin, like uh, I don't know, was it two mil, one mil leather, something like that. Uh, I've got chainmail. I've got steel plate, which is about eighteen gauge. I've just got your typical Gamerson soft kit garb stuff. So I've got a couple of suits and a couple of helmets. But bits and pieces of armor, so I, I have a bit. Okay, nice, nice, and 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 obviously the the more elaborate the armor, the more points it will give you in the game. Or do you decide no, before the more the heavy duty stuff? Oh, so you'll okay. have light, medium, heavy. So light, light could be like you know, light could be like leather mm-hmm. um, or aluminium chain mount kind of things, and then you could go into the medium, which might be heavy leather, heavy steel, or you know, medium steel, and then heavy is plate, is heavy chainmail, is um, is even more heavier leather. 
So it it just ranges on what the what the because, you know, if I come in with a full plate of cosplay armor, and it weighs about one kilo compared <laughs> to the guy who runs around in a full plate that weighs forty, you know, thirty to forty kilos. Yep. You know, you you got to give points to the dude who's running with the heavier stuff. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's not all about the look then. So there is some protective no. elements there as it's well. It's a bit of, yeah, protective elements and it's a bit more functionality. Okay. Nice. You know, a, bit of, a bit of fairness. Like The yeah. main thing is to be fair because someone, a lot of some, you know, you'll, unfortunately you'll have people who don't count hits and so they'll just keep fighting and yep. keep fighting and keep fighting even though they've taken 20 hits. And then you're like, look, man, it's a game, you know, stop being so, an arsehole. Yep. Just take your hits and go back to the start point, you know. Uh, so there are unfortunately those people who who think they're above above the law. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I I like to keep in touch on top of that and go look. You know, fucking how many points? Yep, that's it. You're out. You're out. You know, you're sit done. down for the next game. Yeah. yeah. We um yeah. we just hit them harder. <laughs> <laughs> and and I apologise. I apologise to all my reenactment friends. We shouldn't do that. But some people. Exactly. Exactly. Well, those friends should take their hits. You know? They didn't. They didn't hear me knock on their helmet the first three times. So yeah. I'm going to make oh, it really see, ring yeah. the next time, so they hear. You it. Just ring, and then they'll go. Who's there? Yeah. <laughs> knock, knock. Yeah. So that sounds absolutely really cool. I actually you know, remember you mentioning sword play, sword craft. Yep. I'm pretty sure I hang out with them at one of my medieval gatherings a few years ago. Mm. We have a big one in the middle of nowhere down near Braidwood in Canberra called Bjorgwick. And it's an and authentic medieval village that's owned by one of the bigger clubs in Australia. I remember them coming. It was the first time they'd ever came. And, and they were a little bit less medieval and a little bit more fantasy. But everyone just sort of went, hey, come and hang out. And they, they were doing a lot of archery. That was one thing that they did do. They were the best looking there because we were, you know authentic looking so we were all in browns and greys and probably didn't smell very good while they're in you know vibrant colors yeah yeah vibrant colors and and we were all you know peasants Uh you were peasants dirty peasants yes but i mean i guess that's the difference between what i used to do and and what you Mm. do is where we were a lot more about the historical aspect of it so being members of the um, australian living history federation any reenactment group that wanted to do stuff publicly or or, you know go and join other groups had to have living history federation certification which meant that we knew enough about all of our gear to be able to you know go to a school or a fete or something and actually put on a show and, and learn people some stuff we weren't just there to hit people. We were actually there because, you know, I really enjoy the way chain mail and swords and armor was made. And uh, I can sit down and talk to you all day about the difference between black and whitesmiths, but no one wants to hear that yeah. really no, right no, now. Really, the no. Move along, move sure. along, move along. But moving along. But yeah, so that's what I used to do. And I was, I did medieval martial arts or um, Western martial arts. Hema. No, it yeah. wasn't really HEMA. It wasn't as heavy as that. It was probably a step down. HEMA is still quite heavy. Okay. Uh, I did it for about yeah. four, five or six years, and we came from yeah. a D&D background as well, quite a small group uh, that grew mm. and joined some other larger groups, such as Iron Guard, which is up in the mountains, uh, Vanguard. Yeah. What's the one up in the uh, coastal area? Coastal area, uh, that is Vanguard. I can't remember no. the name. Van- I think Van- it was Vanguard actually. Yeah, Vanguard's up the yeah, up that way, and then there is um, yeah. the AL, the Australian Living History Federation, which is Michael Brown yeah. and all of his guys. Uh, Michael Brown's actually a very accomplished mm-hmm. fighter and has been overseas for tourneys and stuff. Not Battle of the Nations. That's different again. So there are different levels of yeah. hitting people with uh, weaponry, but uh, we were more. About, you know, I'm going to be a Viking, so I need to research everything about Vikings and I need to wear the same armor they wore and wear, use the same weapons they did. And, and when we're in costume or character, we would do the same things they did. And, and we eventually settled on a Carolinian style, which was Charlemagne, sort of Dark Ages, French knight. Like the, like the movies of the Vikings, you know, season what, two, three? I Four? think so. Four. Yeah, it's it's a bit mm-hmm. hazy in my mind, but so we were. Yeah, exactly. You know, the the basic sort of Western knight, chain mail, helmet with aventail, maybe a little bit of plate armor here and there, and just a, a good, good solid longsword with a shield, <laughs> which was in reality, which was the upper echelons as well. Like if you were just you know a bloke off the street, you'd have uh, a thick jumper, 
you might have, you know, a really bad old beaten up helmet that's been through about five or six different guys, a shield, and a stick. And if you were one of the upper class peasants, your stick would be sharp on one end, and that would be about that's it. Right. So there's a lot of wonderful stuff that we did, and, and it was... Dirty, dirty peasants. Dirty peasants, yeah. yes. <laughs> there's a friend of mine, Alex Barnes, who does it as well, and, and he does the revolting peasants. So he doesn't mm. really do much fighting anymore. He used to be the, the head of the Living History Federation, and he now just does peasant stuff. So he just gets around in a peasant smock and, and makes tools and kitchen implements. And he goes to protests against the government and stuff, and he's got a big sign that says, help, help, we're being repressed. <laughs> he's a really cool guy. He's in the yeah, army. He's yeah, been in the army nice. for years, and uh, he's a, oh. quite an accomplished swordsman as well. So we did more of the learning out of books and stuff. So we absolutely yeah. did a lot of techniques and things that were real. So uh, I could, uh, my favorite weapon was the spear, Carolinian spear, which was about seven foot long with about a two foot spike on the end. And I used to love stick fighting. And if anyone's seen Game of Thrones where Oberon fights the mountain, a few of those techniques were ripped clean out of one of the fight books that I actually used, including the one where he belts the ground in front of him to distract him and then smacks him in the chin. I don't know how many people I've done that to. And it's satisfying. Although I've never been killed with my eyes being popped out of my head in a stick fight after that. So that's always you, good. You want me to try? <laughs> um, look, you're welcome to try. I, I haven't yeah, fought I in a few that. years, but I reckon I'd, yeah. I'd still um, at least get a couple on you before you took me down. Because you are yeah, quite okay. larger than I am. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. But yeah, we... Some, some do call me the mountain. Yeah. The mountain, yes. We were sort of in between the LARP and in between, I guess, the Battle of Nations stuff where we would actually whack each other yeah. but it wouldn't be a hard well it'd be a hard hit we were wearing proper armor so we mm. we all had proper armor and there was minimum armor requirements so you had to have armored hands you had to have an armored head mm. neck if you could body had to at least have a gambeson and that's like basically wearing a really thick doona covered in really thick cotton over mm. your middle section it doesn't sound like it provides a lot of protection but they they actually do cushions yeah it does yeah so that was our minimum requirement and a killing blow we as i said before we called a ringing blow so if you hit someone on the helmet hard enough to make it ring like a bell then that was a called a killing blow. And then we had other mm. different types of fighting where, you know, if I smacked you in the arm, if you had a shield or a sword in that arm, you had to drop it as if that arm had been wounded beyond the able to be used. Or if you got hit in the leg, you'd have to stand still in one spot. So we, we did a lot of different things. And if you've ever seen, or been even, if you've ever been to Ironfest in Lithgow, uh, the medieval battles, you know, the grand grand fights and the uh, the fights that they get up to in the middle of the oval before the guys go jousting and before the big boom boom cannons come on. Uh, I was there for quite a few years. So if you've ever mm. been to Iron Fest, you've probably seen me getting belted or belting someone with a sword. So it came from a D&D &D background as well, though. As I was mentioning, we, we sort of were doing D&D &D and then a couple of us were trying to do some fitness and we thought, well, why don't we get some sticks? Let's start hitting each other. <laughs> That's and, what I usually um, call it. Yeah, stick fighting. Well, I, I call it boxing with sticks. Boxing with sticks, yes. Yeah. So so it kind of came from that. And we started doing that for a while. And, you know, the, the injuries were relatively minor because we learned how not to kill someone, like to, to pull, a, pull a blow. Mm. And then, then we discovered these other groups and we went to them and said, hey. And there was a few groups that, you know, started us on the journey and took us under our wing. And we started going to gatherings and... And started to get into the the more crafty side of things, making our own chain mail or mm. or doing making belts out of a technique called pattern uh, or card weaving, you know, all of that sort of stuff, and and starting to look into medieval food and doing a grading system and looking at these fight books and manuscripts and yeah for five years it was a, a lot of fun and and then i got old and had some kids and unfortunately fell by the wayside i still have all my gear so if ever there is a zombie apocalypse i'm sweet because you can't bite through chain mail at all i have tried it just doesn't happen the sad thing is when i when i moved down to bathurst or moved up to oberon or whatever with the um the ex-wife and whatnot you guys had like disbanded uh, like a couple of months beforehand. Oh and, no! Uh, and I was I had like a paper newspaper coupling or something or other, and you guys were advertising. And I came to this place, and it was closed. <laughs> and I was like, oh. "What is this?" And then I found out through someone else or whatever, and it was like, "No, they they, they broke up, man. Like, they broke up like a couple of months ago." I was like, "Nah, nah." Oh, that sucks. Well, I. 
next summer, next summer, I'll pull the arming box out of the uh, shed and, and unlock it, and yeah, we'll have, have a, a fight. Go. Because I, I'll tell you now, and I, I'm probably rambling a little bit, but there's nothing like a good knife fight to really get rid of the tension of the day. Mm. <laughs> it's one of my favourite things to do. And, and when I say a knife fight, I mean basically a short sword. Not not a knife like now, you yeah. know, Crocodile. Okay. Crocodile Dundee, you know how he goes, that's yeah. a knife. That That is a knife. That's a spoon. It was yeah, actually called a yeah, sax yeah, yeah. or a sea axe. Mm. And most people yeah, carried one it. on their belts and mainly used them to eat yeah. their dinner with. But if, if needs right. be, they would try and put it in a, a soft part of you somewhere. So That's knife right. fighting. Well, maybe, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, or. Big, big chunk of flesh. Yeah, yeah, or in your eye or, you know, like open up a vein or something. But sea axe yeah. fighting was really, really stress relieving. It was, there's nothing like you, a knife, and an opponent with the same knife. It, it, it just really brings you back to basics. Possibly why I'm still playing Skyrim to this day, making iron knives, yeah, yeah. trying to get that feeling back. But I didn't know you came looking for us, Mike. That makes me actually a little bit sad mm. because everyone sort of, yep. everyone moved away, you know, work and, and family yeah. and stuff. And it was really yep. hard to, to keep it together. And I tried for a while, and then, yeah, things happen. Life gets everyone, in the way. Everyone, yeah, that's right. And maybe had you, you had you come six months earlier, maybe we'd still be hitting yeah, each other. that's right. But not a cheap hobby at all. No. And, and so, actually, I was going to ask with the armor. So you guys actually get the real deal armor as well, or is it more of a costume armor? Uh, no, no, real, real armor. armor. Eight, it's only 18 gauge, okay. so it's lightweight armor. Yep, yep. You know, I've... I did a bit of SEA with it, mm -hmm. and it had a few dints, <laughs> so it's, you know, to be expected, but it just, yeah, we've got a few fellows who come from the H&B just to have fun, and they wear their full armour, and it's like, did you even feel that? Yeah, you could you could basically run into one of them in a truck. Yeah. That H&B armour is, is insane. Yeah. Uh, I met... I met Team Havoc and some of the guys that are now in Team Australia at a medieval gathering a few years ago called Festival of the Damned, which was down um, Burrenjuk Way or down near Yass on a dam. Oh, and it was a beautiful oh, place. Yeah, yeah. And, and they came and did a tournament, like, you know, friendly tournament match play. And I was the marshal. I was, I was luckily enough to be the marshal. And we brought, we brought the Vanguard guys and we brought, you know, all of the reenactors as well. And we had a reenactment tournament and I was lucky enough to be the marshal for the whole day. I, I wasn't able to fight anymore because I had some wrist problems. So I, I, I couldn't fight, which really, really made me sad. But I was really happy when the, the organizers of the event came over and gave me a big flag and said, look, we see you looking with longingness at, you know, these, <laughs> these guys fighting. We can't let you fight because, you know, it's not fair That's and you right. might really, really hurt yourself. But you can be the marshal. And so if anyone does get really silly, we'll give you a big stick to whack them with. I'm like, yay! <laughs> it was like, fight! All right, and I was like, break, and I was hoping someone wouldn't break yeah. so I could just go over with the stick, you know, and, and get out of it. Them. Quack, 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 quack. But no one ever did. Yeah. They were always very polite That's and right. very, very good. And, and there's no place, and a lot of people are probably going, oh, well, you know, there'd be a lot of dickheads and, and people who just want to out to hurt people. And no, mm. it's not because there's no place for that. And you'll get driven out quite quickly because it's it's... It's quite easy to see whether, you know, you've got good intentions or you're just there to, you know, hit someone yeah. and, and be a dick about it. So they don't it's, last. It's quite easy to figure out who's a dickhead and who's Yeah, not. exactly right. And doubly so with the, the um, HMB guys because they, yeah. they are literally putting their lives on the line. I remember even through all the armour, there was, there was a fair amount of patching up that had to be done at the end of the day. Like the St. John's Ambulance right. guys weren't quiet they didn't get just to sit down and have a smoke and listen to the radio they were they were going pretty well all day um sky broke a thumb fuzz i think hurt himself as well he he got a, a pretty bad gash on his face or something and he just got married too by the way overseas just after the battle of the nation so congratulations mm. there Stephen. that's that's really cool obviously I'm following these guys on Facebook, and we will put the links up to Team Australia and the Battle of the Nations in our socials when um, when we pop this episode on on as well. But I thought me and Mike should just get on here and, and have a bit of a chat about the awesomeness that is fighting with weapons. <laughs> and have you got anything else uh, about this one, Mike, or should we wrap it up there and let everyone know about oh. the social media? Yeah, I think we can wrap it up. Okay, excellent. Well, if you guys have got any questions about anything at all, including the podcast or hitting people with weaponry or lumps of wood or how to get in here, you know, 
to get in on the action or, or whatever, hit us up on the socials. You know the drill, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, all of the good stuff. Get in touch. We will get back to you. And thanks very much for listening to us ramble about uh, mm. some medieval shit. That's right. And uh, if, it, if, it got, if it hits your fancies and whatever you want to try it out, let us know. And we can either help you out or point you in the direction of someone close by. Absolutely. Well, thanks once again for listening and we'll be back real soon.